This video provides some simple ideas for evaluating the potential benefit of implementing a stochastic program with recourse, as opposed to more simple methods when dealing with linear two-stage problems with stochasticity in the parameters. First of all, we summarize some of the necessary concepts presented in the earlier video titled Stochastic Programming with Recourse. Consider a linear program like the one shown here. C1, C2 and B are all vectors of parameters and A1 and A2 are matrices of parameters. X1 and X2 are vectors of decision variables and bold zero means a vector of zeros. It should be noted that everything shown in this video also works for mixed integer linear programs. A stochastic two-stage problem is a problem where some or all of the parameters are stochastic in nature. Some information about the parameters must be known, e.g. that they follow certain distributions, but their exact values are not known until the solution is implemented in practice. Let's use psi to represent the stochastic parts of the problem. This includes stochasticity in any of the parameters a, b and c. Two stage refers to the problem having a recourse action, which means that some of the variables, the stage one variables, have to be fixed before the solution is implemented in practice, i.e. before the true value of the stochastic parameters are known. And other, the stage two variables or recourse action can be changed after the true value of the parameters are known. We use the vector x1 when referring to the first stage decision variables and the vector x2 for the second stage variables. Furthermore, max c of x1 and psi is used as a shorthand for the stochastic program shown to the left. Typically, we have a finite set of scenarios that can occur, denoted by s. Each of these have their own value of psi, i.e. of the parameters of the problem, as well as their own probability of occurrence. It could be that the weather might be sunny, rainy, windy or snowy, each with some probability. If we don't have a finite set of scenarios, hopefully we are instead able to simulate a set of sample scenarios. We use PL to denote the probability of scenario L. When simulating, all scenarios have the same probability. In order to write up the stochastic program with recourse, we first need to introduce a version of the x2 vector for each of the scenarios. We refer to these as x2L, 4L in S. The objective of the stochastic program with recourse becomes an average across all of these S scenarios. For each of the scenarios, we need a version of the constraints from the original problem using the appropriate version of the stage 2 variables. Solving this problem will find the best solution on average across all the scenarios. We refer to this problem as the recourse problem, or simply RP, which we can also write shorthand in the following way. Here, E simply means the expected or average value across all values of psi. Notice that the maximization based on the stage one variables happens outside of the average, which is in line with the definition of the problem. Solving RP might give nice solutions for problems with recourse. However, it is clear that the problem scales quite poorly with the number of scenarios. For each scenario, a new set of stage two variables and a new set of constraints are needed. In practice, RP is often solved with decomposition techniques, like Bender's decomposition, which splits up the problem into smaller problems, one for each scenario. But even then, it can quickly become hard to solve RP for large problems with many scenarios. Therefore, it can be nice to evaluate the potential benefits from using RP as opposed to a much simpler model. One of the simplest models one can imagine is the expected value problem, EV for short. EV can be defined as such. It is simply the problem using the average values of the stochastic parameters. Hence, it has exactly the same number of variables and constraints as the original problem, which makes it much easier to solve than RP. The problem with EV is that the solution to the average problem probably will not be feasible in many of the individual scenarios. In the extreme case, it might actually be infeasible in all scenarios. An alternative problem is EEV, or the expected result using EV. The idea here is that if the solution from EV wants to be implemented in practice, 
one would still have the option to react with the x2 variables when the true value of psi would become known. We define x psi bar of e of psi as the value of the x1 variables in the optimal solution to ev. Given this value and a value of psi, one could then find the optimal value of x2 for that specific psi. We define eev as the average value acquired using this technique across all values of psi. This means that in order to solve eev, we need to solve the problem for each scenario, which is of course many more problems than the one in ev. However, the problems are small, same size as the original problem, but we even have the x1 variables fixed. And overall, the moment we get many scenarios, it is much easier to solve the many small problems in eev than the single large problem in RP. Finally, we define WS as the wait and see solution. This one is slightly different from the others as it assumes that we can completely eliminate the stochasticity of the problem. The idea being that we do not need to fix any of the variables before knowing the true value of the parameters. Essentially, all variables become stage two variables. Most often, this is not possible in practice. If it was, why would we be considering a stochastic problem anyway? However, there are cases where we can, for example, delay some decisions at a certain cost or perform a better analysis of the parameters to reduce the stochasticity. In either case, WS gives an upper bound on the best possible solution if the modeler had perfect information about the parameters. Hence, WS is simply defined as the average value of the original problem across all scenarios. We can now write up this relation between the optimal objective values of the four problems. EV is greater than or equal to WS, which is greater than or equal to RP, which is then greater than or equal to EEV. An intuition behind this is that EV is cheating. It is not always feasible. WS is not cheating. It is feasible for all values of psi. However, it assumes perfect information. So the solution is the optimal, no matter what the scenario is. RP is always feasible, but not as good as WS, because RP does not have perfect information when choosing X1. Instead, it considers the individual scenarios and finds the best solution on average. EEV will have the lowest value since it only uses the average scenario when determining x1. Still, it will try to respect the constraints in each individual scenario, unlike EV. For EEV, if a certain scenario is infeasible given the chosen x1 bar of E of psi, then the objective value is set to minus infinity. We can now define the expected value of perfect information or EVPI as WS minus RP. This is quite intuitive. The best we can do without perfect information is to use the recourse problem. Hence the value of having perfect information is the difference in the wait and see solution and RP. If we knew EVPI, we could answer the question how much can we expect the solution to improve on average if we had perfect information? This might allow a company to evaluate whether it could be beneficial either to delay the choice of x1 or to improve knowledge about the stochastic variables. The problem is that with the current definition of EVPI, we need to solve both WS and RP to determine EVPI. And as mentioned earlier, it can be very hard to solve RP in practice. Instead, we use their internal relation to determine bounds on EVPI. Having an upper bound on the potential gains from having perfect information can be beneficial. And since EV and EEV are both much easier to solve than RP, this upper bound can easily be calculated. Similarly, we define VSS equal to RP minus EEV as the value of the stochastic solution. This one answers the question, how much can we expect the solution to improve on average if we use the stochastic solution as opposed to the expected value solution? Interestingly, the bounds on VSS are actually the same as on EVPI. However, that does not mean that the two values are directly related. It is possible, for example, to have EVPI to be zero and VSS to be positive and vice versa. We conclude this video with a small example. 
consider the shown linear program which has this optimal solution. In an alternative scenario, the coefficients of x2 are changed slightly as shown in this version of the problem, which ends up affecting the optimal solution as well. The first scenario occurs with probability 0.4 and the second with probability 0.6. The problem is a two-stage problem with recourse, where x1 is the stage 1 variable and x2 is the stage 2 variable corresponding to the recourse action. Given the optimal solutions and probabilities of each of the two scenarios, the weight and C solution is calculated to 136 over 15, which is approximately 9.05. This is the best possible objective value one could hope for on average if x1 did not have to be fixed before the true values of the stochastic parameters were revealed. The corresponding expected value problem is given by this. The stochastic parameters have been changed to their weighted averages. The corresponding optimal solution value is 136 over 15, meaning that this is an example where ws is equal to ev. The optimal value of x1 is 52 over 15. We use this result to determine EEV. x1 is fixed to 52 over 15 in each of the two scenarios. The resulting objective values are 154 over 15 and 112 over 15 respectively. This leads to an average solution value of approximately 8.59. Next, we can use these values to determine an upper bound on the expected value of perfect information and the value of the stochastic solution. This upper bound turns out to be approximately 0.48. Compared to the value of EEV, which is at 8.59, 0.48 is around 5.6%. Depending on the magnitude of the problem, this could for example mean a significant potential increase in sales and it might convince a company that they should spend more money on improving their knowledge of the stochastic parameters or solve the recourse problem. For the sake of the example, we finish by writing up and solving the recourse problem. It looks like this and has an optimal solution value of 8.8. .8. We can now write up all the values we have found and see that EVPI is in fact 0.27 and VSS is 0.21. This is of course a bit lower than the upper bound of 0.48. But in this case, the gap between EV and EEV is split between the recourse problem and the wait and see solution. We confirm that there would indeed be a benefit to gain in both solving the recourse problem and in improving the information, getting closer to the wait and see solution. We can never know for sure though if this will be the case as the method presented here only gives an upper bound on EVPI and VSS. The lower bound is still zero. This concludes the example and the video.